Hi everyone, um, I thought I would jump on today to talk a little bit about wheat gluten and fructan intolerance. And that was because um, someone contacted me and they said there's heaps of information about gluten but really don't know much about wheat intolerance. And I thought, well, why don't I just look at all three because they all kind of interlink with each other. Gluten intolerance is pretty common with many people having been diagnosed with celiac disease non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Um, and according to celiac in New Zealand, 10% of the population are actually gluten intolerant and 80% of those um, have an undiagnosed celiac disease. So more people probably have celiac disease and we realize the tests that we have aren't particularly sensitive, but they're the best that we have. Um, there are many people who feel that they are intolerant to gluten. Maybe they've had a celiac test that was negative, but it might not actually be the gluten that is the problem. Um, it could be wheat or it could be something called fructan. So that's really what I'm going to focus on more than anything. Now, the problem is that the symptoms of celiac disease, wheat allergy, gluten, gluten intolerance, wheat intolerance or fructan intolerance, so they're all really similar. And they include abdominal pain, bloating, flatulence, you know, painful trapped wind, diarrhea, constipation, skin rashes and itching, uh, acne type skin conditions, joint pain, um, hay fever type symptoms, nasal congestion, sinusitis, brain frog, um, problems with your memory and thinking, headaches, migraines. I mean, the list is endless and it could be any of those things and other things as well. So many people might cut gluten out from their diet because they believe they are sensitive to it. Um, and that might be because they've had um, a wheat-based product like bread or pasta or cakes or slices. Um, and then they've had symptoms afterwards. Um, and sometimes it's hard to know whether it's actually gluten or wheat or fructans. And it might be that you've removed gluten for a while, but you're still having problems or you don't then want to test to see if you've got celiac because you don't want to have to bring gluten-free food back into your diet to, just to find out if you have celiacs. So if you have symptoms after you've eaten bread type products or cereals or pasta, then the first thing I would say is to rule out whether you do have celiac disease. So celiac disease is an autoimmune condition. It's not an allergy and it's not an intolerance. I'm not gonna talk about that specifically today because I really wanna focus more on fructans and wheat. Um, it is a blood test. They can test for um, your genetic risk and they can also test to see if you have the antibodies that show you have celiacs. If that's negative and you do have to be eating um, gluten foods in order to get the test. So it might be that you don't actually want to eat gluten foods in order to get the test. But if you do do it and it's negative, then it's also worth getting an allergy test, which can either be a skin test or a blood test to see if what you have is a wheat allergy or a gluten allergy. And that's worth just checking as well. And then if they're all negative, then what you're left with is, well, do I have gluten intolerance? Do I have a wheat intolerance or a fructans intolerance? So the, the best thing to do, you, there are tests out there, um, intolerance tests, but the best way to do an intolerance test is the elimination and challenge diet in order to determine if it's gluten, if it's wheat, or if it's fructans. And if it's fructans, then that could be a whole range of different foods and it might be only specific fructans that you are sensitive to. And that's really important because you don't necessarily want to wipe out a whole food group if you don't need to. So what's the difference between gluten, wheat and fructans? Well, gluten is an umbrella term for a specific group of what we call storage proteins. They're known as pro prolamines. And they're prolamines because they're rich in a specific amino acid, which is the building block of protein, called proline. And they're naturally found in certain grains and plants like wheat, barley, and rye. Now, the biggest um, prolamines that people have an issue with are prolamines called glutenins and gliadins, and they are found in wheat. There are also secolins that are found in rye, hordines found in barley, and avenin found in oats. Now, there are also gluten-free alternatives that people might use, such as corn and sorghum wheat, which are gluten-free, but they also contain prolamines called zine and kaffirin. So the, the, the problem is, is that some people might react to all of these prolamines, which is why you might have been on a gluten-free diet, but you're still having problems. And it might be 
the corn and the sorghum wheat could be causing the problem. Also, if you have celiacs or you have like an inflammation where you've actually destroyed some of the lining of the intestines, then it might be you need to remove dairy for a while because you can't actually absorb dairy because of the damage that's been done to the intestines. It might be that you don't necessarily react to everything, that you're actually um, only having problems with glutenin and gliadin, but you're okay with avenin found in oats. And it might be that, like, you know, there are some that you're having a problem with, but not all of them. So even with gluten-free, it might not be all of the gluten-free proteins that you actually have a problem with. Now, gluten is, a lot, is used a lot in processing where um, because it has a gluten, it's like a glue-like effect. It gives bread its airy, chewy texture, and it gets added to lots of different products because it's able to retain moisture and improve the texture of certain products. And it's commonly used as a preservative, a thickener, and a stabilizer. So you really do have to do a huge amount of label reading. And there's a huge amount of information about gluten-free eating. So I'm not gonna focus on that here. If you go to my blog, I've actually given a few places that I highly recommend that you go and find out more about celiac, non-celiac, um, uh, gluten sensitivity, foods that you can swap to and, and some places where you can actually go and get coaching and support. So I've put those on my blog. Um, so I'm gonna focus on wheat. So wheat is a grain and it's found in lots of foods. It's also found in lots of non-food products. Um, now being wheat free doesn't necessarily mean you have to be gluten free because you can still consume barley, rye and oats. Again, you have to become an avid label reader in the same way that those who follow gluten free diets have to be. And you do have to be particularly cautious with pro processed food because um, breads, bread type products, they obviously contain wheat. That includes Indian flatbreads. So there are some Indian flatbreads like chapatis or rotis that might traditionally have been made from chickpea flour or bisan flour, um, but they're actually made from wheat. Lots of breakfast cereals have wheat, even when they look like they, they, there's something else, they sometimes add wheat to them. Biscuits, crackers, cakes, pizza, pastries, lots of soups will have wheat added um, as a thickener sauces, gravies, soy sauce. So you do have to be careful when you're having any kind of Asian food where soy sauce is a, is a main ingredient because soy sauce is fermented wheat. You can get uh, wheat free. Um, tamari tends to be a wheat free version, but you do need to check that. Sometimes wheat is added to spices, potato chips. Sometimes um, wheat is added as part of the flavoring. Lots of processed meats. Uh, sausage is a really good example of where wheat is added, um, battered and obviously bedded products. There are many, many ready-made meals. It's a minefield. You really have to read those ingredients and have a look to see if wheat is, is in those ready-made meals. You need to avoid the following, which are mainly grains, but not all. So anything that's got bul bulgur wheat in, durum wheat. Um, so lots of pastas have durum wheat. Couscous. Einkorn, emma, frika, which are all different types of um, wheat type grains, spelt flour. Now, some people can tolerate wheat um, spelt flour. It's a different type of wheat flour, it tends to be less processed, um, but some people can't cope with that either. Semolina, um, triticale, wheat bran, wheat germ, anything with whole wheat in the title. And there's also something called sitan, or um, S E I T A N, which is a, a vegan meat-like product and that is basically made from wheat so the wheat-free alternatives you can have would be anything that's wheat-free gluten-free you know that will be okay wheat-free or gluten-free breadcrumbs cakes cereals rye crackers will be okay if you're only wheat-free rye bread traditional thick dense rye bread really good for us oat cakes but again check the labels because some oat cakes have added wheat to it corn cakes rice cakes and and um Wheat-free crackers, wheat-free pasta. There's so many different types of pasta um, out there at the moment. Um, wheat-free grains that you can have are amaranth, barley, buckwheat, corn, maize and polenta, millet, oats, quinoa, rice, rye, and also the sorghum, which is said is gluten-free, but it's um, if you don't have a problem with those polamines, then actually sorghum wheat is great if you're wheat-free. And then again, wheat-free flour, such as buckwheat flour, chickpea, which is sometimes called, called busan, Almond flour, lentil flour, millet, oat bran, pea, um, 
potato flour look brilliant but you can use that rice flour teff and tapioca are all types of flours that you can use when you're cooking either as, either as thickeners or if you're actually baking now some really good tips that if you go to the british dietetic association they actually talk quite a bit about wheat free um, eating and it's a really good idea is that if you wanted to have um chicken or, or fish or something where you wanted to have like a bread crumb, crumb type um, coating, then you can use other things. So you can use things like crushed cornflakes, you can use buckwheat, you can use crushed up nuts and seeds. Macadamia nuts and almonds are brilliant for, for making a, a crunchy bread crumb type, um, type coating. Always ask, if you go to a restaurant, ask if they use wheat free sauces or wheat free soy. You can get wheat free gravy powders or you can actually use cornstarch as a, as a thickener for if you're making gravy. If you're making sauces at home, then you can get um, cornstarch or corn flour and mix it with a little bit of cold water to make a paste. And then you can add your warmed milk or milk alternative, your water or your stock. And then you basically stir it slowly until thickened, just like the old fashioned way of making a sauce. And you can do that with gluten free flours, wheat free flours and cornstarch as well to make a nice thick sauce. Um, heaps of different types of wheat free and gluten free pasta. So corn is great. Quinoa is great. I really like Sarah's quinoa um, spaghetti and pastas. I think they taste really good. Um, buckwheat, um, uh, legumes, there's some really good different types of legume based pastas, all of which would be okay. Um, chick beers and lagers. So most beers and lagers are made from barley, but there are European styled beers that generally are made only from wheat, or they can be made from a wheat and barley mix. So always check the label first. If you're baking, always check for wheat free or gluten free baking powder. And you can use something called xanthan gum to improve the texture as a replacement for the gluten if you're actually doing any baking. So if you are wheat free, then you're largely eating gluten free foods, but you can have barley, rye and oats. Um, so you can add more food to your diet. You're not gonna be strict gluten free. Um, and again, it might be that you remove those foods to start with for a couple of weeks, and then you could actually try bringing them back slowly to find out, um, is it gluten or is it wheat that's the problem? And then that might, it might be that some wheat products are a, a problem, so bread is the problem, but you're okay with other types of wheat, wheat type products. So it's the same with dairy. Sometimes you have a problem with milk, but you're okay with butter and yogurt. So it might be that you have to play around with the wheat free, unless it's a wheat allergy, to work out what specifically you have a problem with rather than just removing everything. Now we come to fructans, just to add to the confusion. So some people actually have an intolerance to fructans. Now fructans are basically a type of carbohydrate. So whilst the, the sometimes the wheat allergy, the, the gluten, the gluten issues come about because of the protein. With fructans, it's actually about the carbohydrate. So fructans are a type of carbohydrate. They're one of the FODMAPs, fermentable carbohydrates. So we've talked about um, FODMAPs before. So they are the O in FODMAPs. So the O is oligosaccharides. I can never remember the, all the FODMAPs, but it's basically for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, which are sugar alcohol. So oligosaccharides are basically made up of fructans and another type of carbohydrate called um, galacto oligosaccharides, which I will talk about another time. So fructans are basically like a chain of fructose and glucose. So imagine a pearl necklace, um, and this pearl necklace has got lots of, lots of little pearls all attached to each other. And that chain is basically a fructan. And each pearl is either mainly fructose um, with gl glucose at the end. And these are simple sugars, but because they're in a chain, they're not digestible. And we don't have the enzymes to break these chains up into simple sugars. So in the vast majority of people, they just pass through, they get fermented along the way by our gut bacteria in the colon. And some people might get a bit windy, but the fermentation is really good because the end results of the fermentation process by our gut bacteria are short chain fatty acids. And they are hugely beneficial to our gut health and our whole general health as well. Now, for some people, that fermentation might cause more gas than usual. Um, which can be really uncomfortable. I mean, some people are a little bit more sensitive to that bloating feeling. 
had that hypersensitivity and we're a bit more sensitive to the discomfort and the pain. And so we can find that really uncomfortable. Fructans can also draw water into the intestines, which can cause more bloating because of the water, not the gas, and diarrhea in some people. So there's a really interesting study in the journal Gastroenterology that actually reported that they, they were looking at people with, with, who thought they had gluten intolerance, and they actually found that fructans caused more digestive symptoms than glu gluten did in a group of people who thought they were gluten sensitive. And in fact, there's been several studies that have been undertaken even recently, and, and there's more coming through that suggest that fructans are actually a bigger problem than gluten. If you are not celiac disease, then if you think you're gluten sensitive, it might not be gluten, it might not be wheat, it might actually be the fructans. So in another study, 70% of people experiencing irritable bowel um, syndrome symptoms improve their symptoms just by reducing FODMAPs food rather than following a just a strictly gluten-free diet. And that's one of the reasons why FODMAP diets are becoming more popular and being recommended by doctors because there's some really good research about them. But what we need to know is that these FODMAP diets are not permanent diets. They're actually short-term, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So fructans are found in wheat type products. So all of the products that I've talked about earlier in regards to if you wanted to go wheat free or what foods contain wheat, well, fructans are found in wheat based product. Plus they're found in onions, shallots, spring onions, garlic, barley, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, pistachio nuts, artichokes, inulin and chicory. Now, some people might react to barley, but oats are usually okay. So again, you might think you're gluten-free, but it's actually the fructans that are the problem and you're okay with the oats because there aren't any fructans um, in oats. It might be that you're actually okay to eat sourdough bread because the fermentation process means that there's very little fructans in that bread compared to normal bread. So why should we just stop eating gluten or wheat or fructans and just be done with it? Well, the short answer is because naturally containing gluten rich foods, which are generally those grains. And obviously in fructans, we're talking about some really good vegetables and nuts that are really beneficial for us. They contain lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. They are rich in fiber and they are prebiotic. So they feed our good gut bacteria. So by removing them in the long run, actually starve our good gut bacteria causing more digestive problems in the long term and lots of different problems going forward in our general health so we really don't want to do FODMAPs for long term and we really don't necessarily want to be wheat free or gluten free unless we absolutely have to we know that we've done the checks and if we eat gluten type foods or wheat type foods we're really unwell then you need to remove it I would also have a caveat and say if you have autoimmune uh, an autoimmune condition, then it's definitely worth trying to remove gluten from your diet because that can actually exacerbate autoimmune conditions. I would remove it and just see if your symptoms improve as well. So there are plenty of healthy, gluten-free, wheat-free, fructan um, alternatives out there. But I would say do it as a last resort. Don't do it as a first resort just because you think it's trendy. I want you, it's really important that you actually trial it and just see if it makes a difference. Now, if you think you have a problem with gluten, wheat, or fructose, please get checked first. Check to make sure that you don't have celiacs or a wheat allergy. And then if you're interested in trying the FODMAP diet and you want to know more about whether you have a gluten or wheat or fructose intolerance, then let me know because I'd love to help. There's a really easy way of actually checking this takes a bit of time, but you will know at the end whether you need to remove a whole food group or whether you just need to remove just a few. Because the more variety in our diet, the more variety we have in our, of our gut bacteria, the healthier we are going to be in the long run. So it's really about getting as much variety and diversity in our diet. And we don't want to be as restricted unless we really need to. So if you want help to find out if you need to, please give me a shout. I'd love to help. If you want to know about any of the references, please go along to my blog at sarah brenchlycom The blog is there, there are references there that you can go and have a look at and a few places that you can go and get more information from. So have a fantastic day. I hope this has helped. If you've got any questions at all about this video, um, please let me know. I would love to know your questions and do my best to answer them. So 
Take care and I will see you soon.